This year's Meeting Place keynote speaker is Julia Hales. Julia is a performer and writer with 20 year history of working with Dada in Western Australia to develop and realise her artistic goals. A dedicated performer, Julia creates work focused on identity, fame and love. She has co-devised her own work and performed at the State Theatre Centre of WA, the Blue Room Theatre, the Perth Institute of Contemporary Arts, on ABC Radio and with KCAT in Callan Island. Earlier this year, her play, You Know We Belong Together, premiered at the 2018 Perth Festival as a co-production with Dada and Black Swan State Theatre. You Know We Belong Together played to sell out audiences and received glowing reviews and will be restaged by Black Swan State Theatre Company as part of their 2019 season. So we're absolutely thrilled that Julia could join us today. Please welcome Julia Hales to the stage. Assess Australia Meeting Place in Alice Springs. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land and the Awanda of people and thank them for their elders for sharing this land with us for Meeting Place. I'd like, I like to thank the Arts Assess Australia for inviting me to deliver the keynote for Meeting Place. It is a great honour and I hope I'll do it justice. Together we belong. Yeah, no, I need to show this bit here. Yeah. Ah, oh, sorry, guys. I just keep going. Sorry. Um, family. Yes, I'm Julia Hales, and I am now 38 years old. And did I mention that I'm still single? The play that you just saw a little bit of is the one that I created called You Know We Belong Together. I wanted to talk to you about how, how was that made and how we can all create opportunities if we dream big. Do you want to stop and see if we can play the part? Um, I was going to show you just a little bit of that play that I did but I don't know which button to press. <laughs> I'll just keep going. Okay. My mum and dad have always told me that I have an extra chromosome. This one with the circle on it, it's chromosome 21. So there's no sound to this. Right, we'll just get that one. Go to the next one. Unthinking casting. In 1988, when I was eight years old, I was sitting on my parents' couch watching Home and Away. They had some characters with disabilities, but they were actors pretending to have a disability. The people that I wanted to see is where people who really had a disability. 
Who hadn't been on TV? I really wanted people with disability stories to be the main story. I want people to actually see people with an actual disability because they really have a disability. This is me and Ray Ma. My uncle Mark had taught me to the Rats Museum in Sydney. <laughs> I saw Forrest Gump. I know Tom Hanks was really good, but it's really sad. They didn't have a man with a disability playing that part. I've seen other movies throughout my life that had the same problem. And in 1996, I went to see a French movie called The Eighth Day. This was the first time I saw a movie with a character with a disability played by an actor with a disability. And I was really surprised I was so used to, to seeing actors without disabilities playing a disabled characters. And this movie made me think, well, of course we can be in a movie like that. In 1995, I start doing some arts and performance projects at the new organisation in Perth called Dada. artistic history. I have developed my artistic skills at Dada and Whopper since 1995. And I am going to skip through some of these projects I've been in. This was a video where I was talking about a character that I had created for Home and Away. Her name, Claire, well, her name was Claire and she's Elf's long lost granddaughter. Leadership. In 2015, I was lucky to get into the Australia Council for the Arts SYNC Leadership Program. And I got to meet other artists who shared stories about their careers. We did a lot of exercises because they gave advice to us 
about visioning our careers, dreaming big and setting goals. I learned to be a better leader. I saw myself as a leader before that program. Helping other people with disabilities <coughs> to lead independent lives. I spoke to groups such as the Down Syndrome Association Playgroup. Parents and helping the community were being an advocate for all other people with Down Syndrome who found it hard to speak for themselves. The coaches worked with us one to one to see how we were progressing. They found ways to help each of us to understand our, that our careers were like a journey. My career was me, riding freely on a horse. They asked me, where are you now on your horse? My mum had passed away three months earlier, but that was a very tough year that year. I mean, it was very hard because my mum was my best friend and I've been using my grave into projects and doing all sorts of stuff. And I miss her every single day, and I always will. When I got back to Perth after sink, I went straight back to Dada, and I told them all the stuff that I've learned. I was very clear what I wanted to do. I wanted to change the world, to make it better and to make a difference. I wanted to help other people with all sorts of disabilities to experience the same thing I had with SYNC. I wanted them to get clear about what they want in their artist's careers. This is when I started to get really serious about, about the Down syndrome community and begin my research with other people and artists with Down syndrome. I wanted to find out, find out about love in, in their lives. The interviews I've been, that I've, that I've been doing this, it's kind of like a, kind of like a research. I wrote down questions like, can you tell me what love means to you? Do you think love and sex go together? Where do you find love? Does the world need more love? It means I love my mum and it means I love my family. I worked with Dada Digital Team to do some of the filming of the interviews with Patrick Carter, Tina Fielding and Lauren Munchbank. The short film was called Finding Love. Mentoring. I interviewed in March 2016 and then edit with Lincoln McKinnon. The Finding Love interviews were screened as part of the Dada Digital Dialogues project. My project had actually started Leakin was a great mentor. Dada mentored me to apply for Meeting Place Pitch to produce in March 2017. I also screened the Finding Love interviews as part of Meeting Place in 2017. Some of you might have seen this. Digital Dialogues 2016. Finding Love. A film by Julia Hales is titled on the left, while on the right there is an image of a smiling Julia holding a large video camera on her right shoulder. Julia is a girl in her 30s with shoulder-length brown hair and glasses. She wears a light blue cardigan over a patterned blue and white dress. The interviews are conducted with Julia sitting in a studio with a host of recording equipment behind her. 
The images swap from Julia posing the questions to images of her friends answering them. Julia herself answers some of the questions. Tina Fielding has long brown hair, is in her 20s and is wearing a simple sleeveless red shift dress. Tina smiles a lot and expresses herself with exuberant hand movements. Patrick Carter, a large man also in his 20s, wears a grey polo shirt and has a shaved head and a beard. He is quite composed but does put out his arm to emphasise a point. Lauren Marchbank is a girl in her 20s with long blonde hair and wearing a loose denim waistcoat over a dark pink t-shirt. She is very composed. Can you tell me what love means to you? Tina replies. Um, to me, to fall in love with someone is like a spark. For me, I, oh, my eyes are always, almost real. It means I can add too, too quickly to the guys. So I'm really, I, I'm sucker of love. Patrick replies. Dada have helped me to apply for the Australia Council for the Arts Artist with Disability Grant in early 2017. It was to creatively develop Finding Love into a live performance work with a writer and collaborator, Finn O'Brannigan, and it was successful. And this is me and Finn working together. I was working with the Jenny Seely workshop and meeting new artists from around Australia. And some of you might be here. At the same time, I got, I got to sit down with Wendy Martin, the artistic director of Perth Festival. She told me, she told me that she, she, she saw my Finding Love interviews and that she loved them. She told me about moving it forward and that's when she introduced me to Claire Watson from Black Swan State Theatre Company. And this is me and Wendy at, at the Perth Telethon. So the first time I met Claire, I keep telling her that she was a great director and I really wanted to work with her. When Claire watched my Finding Love interviews, she wanted to work with me on that. We decided to have a meeting and talk about, talk about things that I love and about my dream and the Finding Love interviews. And this is me and Claire in her office. We decided to work together as a team. I still can't believe that Claire wanted to be involved in my play. That my play will be directed by her as part of the 2017 Perth Festival. And co-production between Dada, Black Swan State Theatre Company and Perth Festival. Wow! <laughs> All this mentoring turned the six minute Six Minute Finding Love film into a one hour play. You know we belong together. Research. In July 2017, I begin working with Finn O'Brannigan. We worked together for five months to develop the script. As a part of that five months, we researched the back history of Down syndrome and how, and how people with Down syndrome were treated in the two hospitals in Fremantle and Claremont. It was very sad. They had, they had newborn babies with Down syndrome, and they, let, and they let, let those babies starve to death. Headphones to electric shot their brains. When the parents decided to give the baby up and put them in the Freeman to asylum, where they all lived together in one place, so that means they got locked up. 
When I found out, I was so upset. It really destroyed me. How they did that, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I couldn't believe how, how they treated them like that and the family had stood up for them, to fight for them, to get them out, to make sure that they could live their life the way they wanted. So this is one of the babies that they made called Crawling Figure. Uh, fig, yeah, figure. Uh, and it's from central Mexico. And it kind of reminds me when I, when I was a baby. It still, it still makes me upset. It's in the past. But I don't want it to happen again. I include this fact in the play to let people know that I, a person with Down syndrome, had only just discovered that this was the way that people with Down syndrome were treated. They shut down the Swanbourne Hostel in Claremont just before I was born in 1980. This, this is me performing in front of an artwork by my mother, Carol Hales. She curated this after I did a performance at the Fremantle Art Centre, which used to be the Fremantle Asylum. We also did research on doctors who gave and what I think it was wrong in information. To new mothers who had been screened as having babies with Down syndrome, in, in Iceland. In Iceland, there were no babies with Down syndrome born at all. This painting kind of reminds me of my mum when she was holding me when I was a baby. I was upset and angry that they didn't have babies with Down, sy Down syndrome in Iceland. As a woman with Down syndrome, if I wasn't born, my parents were pressured to terminate. I wouldn't have been born at all. They celebrated when, when I was born. My life has my life always been celebrated by my family. History and future were two pieces of research that stayed with me. Institutions is in the past. Termination is in the future and we can't let it happen again. People need to learn more about the Down syndrome and other ways of living. And I've been lucky to do that through you know, you know We Belong Together. Together. We also researched the first doctor to find a Down syndrome. It was Dr. Lagan Down. He built a theatre to encourage people with Down syndrome to act on his stage dance and make the sets. And this is him. This is me and Joshua Bott dancing in You Know We Belong Together. I was joined in my play for six other artists with Down syndrome who brought their stories to mine. Four of them were artists I knew. Tina Fielding, Patrick Carter, Lauren Munchbank, and Joshua Bott. I met a married couple, Mark and Melissa Juno, who came up from Augusta to do the season. And this is them dancing. They and all of the creatives and production partners had worked together with me to make our show happen. And here we all are at the end of the play. 
working together with an industry professionals. It was really exciting for me and my fellow artists with Down syndrome. Partners. Dada. Dada helped me to develop as an artist. Dada supported my growth as an artist and development of, of my artistic voice. 20 years of development was pulled together in 2015 during sync and after my mum passed away. They helped me. They helped me to make filmed interviews, apply for the grants, and match me up with an amazing mentors such as Finn O'Brenigan, Zoe Martin, Lincoln McKinnon, Simone Favell, and Laura Boyntz, who, who was also in the show with us. They also helped me to connect with Wendy Martin through their four-year partnership with Perth Festival. I... I now have my own funding and continue to be supported by data for my professional development. They make opportunities to fulfill my personal goals, such as making a showreel, working with mentors to develop new work, and helping me to write a present at a conference, such as Meeting Place. Perth International Arts Festival. Perth Festival provided me with a festival platform and audience and introduced me to Claire Watson. Anna Reese and Wendy Martin from the Perth Festival were so supportive of my vision as an artist and I am so grateful I filmed my interviews. So they could understand what I wanted to do. The best, thing, uh, the best thing about me being in the Perth Festival was it really helped my career to shine, to all the work I have done has paid off. And I, and I am so proud of this play. I love the Down Syndrome community I love my arts community to let everyone know that, that I made a difference in this world, to change the world, to make it better, to make it better to live in. That's why I love being part of the Perth Festival. Black Swan State Theatre Company. Black Swan had helped me to work with an industry professionals. This is me and James Stewart. James Stewart plays Justin Morgan in Home and Away. I really would love to play his new partner in the show and maybe in real life. <laughs> this is me and Ray Ma. He's been on in Home and Away for 30 years and he's one of my amazing friends. Working with Black Swan, had taught me a lot of things about directing and sharing. Working with, with a major performing arts company and inviting six friends to introduce themselves. Working with professional artists with the dream come true. Black Swan organised a trip to Sydney to make my dream happen on Home and Away. I did filming with Ray Ma. It was a bit like playing Claire Stewart, the character that I created for Home and Away. When the play, so when the play has finished, I've changed. I see how the future will be. The Australia Council for the Arts, all three all three production partners have relationships with the Australia Council for the Arts. 
The Australia Council for the Arts has partnered, funded with me and, and the co-producers of all stages of development for You Know We Belong Together. The Australia Council for the Arts has also supported nearly all Dada's projects that I have done for the least 22 years. So we have family, authentic casting, artistic history, leadership, mentoring, research, together, partners, have all led to my future. My next project is to work with Chris Conn from Melbourne. He, he is a theatre maker and he asked me to come over to work with him in his theatre to meet new people and to make work about screening for Down syndrome as a documentary theatre piece. I am also a research coordinator for the Experience Collider project to work with 20 young performers with high support needs and the Telethon Kids Institution. My role is to ask the performers questions about the project activities, helping to work out how performance and the arts had helped improve their quality of life. I am running, th I, I am running three workshops with people with Down Syndrome. The Down Syndrome Association Board wanted me to work with our community who wanted to improve their performance skills. I invited Tina Fielding to work with me on this. Since You Know We Belong Together was a part of the Perth Festival, Black Swan arranged, arranged with Dada to have some of my working time every Wednesday for their programming meeting. On August the 27th of this year, Black Swan had launched their 2019 season and asked me to present with another actor, Ian Michael. They also announced a return season of You Know We Belong Together in March next year. <laughs> and it's going to be in the main theatre this time. <laughs> and they are always home and away. <laughs> and you probably, you probably would see this young, this man. <laughs> now back to me, riding freely on my horse. I have jumped on my horse and, and I am riding fast towards an amazing opportunities. I have dreamt big and want us all to do the same. I'd like to ask you all, where are you now on your horse? And I really would like to say, Together we all belong. The Down syndrome community, the arts community coming together and working as a team. I'd like to thank you all for giving me this keynote and, and I want you all to know that this is just an amazing opportunity for everyone here today. And I want to thank all my mentors and also Simone. She's an amazing woman. And thank you all for, and thank you all so much. Thank you. Thanks so much to Julia. We now have time for some questions. So there's some roving mics around. If you've got a question, if you could pop your hand up, and Julia and I will sit here and take questions. Okay. Thank you. So, 
Hello, Julia. I'm just Hi. wondering, when can we see Home and Away cast people with disability as a, a regular thing on our TV screens, do you think? Um, I'm not really sure when they're going to be um, giving people, um, people with disabilities on Home and Away. Because um, when I mention, because um, in my play, and, we, and what I said, that Home and Away is ready for a full-time character with Down syndrome, and that's when I say that, that I'm available. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that's... But <laughs> I'm not quite. I'm not quite sure if that's the an answer to your question. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're just going to try and play the video segment from the talk that was in the first part. Yeah. So this is an extract from the play. Okay. Sorry, we're having trouble playing the video, so we'll take more questions. Has anyone else got some questions for Julia? So up there. Hello. Yeah, sure. Hey. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alison. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I, for six years, coordinated an ensemble of performers that also have Down syndrome. And I, you know, we all saw ourselves as professional artists and industry professionals. So it's kind of, I think, flipping the script a bit, you know, when you're also saying that you're lucky enough to perform and, and work alongside industry professionals. I'd say that after 20 years, you are one of those industry professionals. Yes. <laughs> and they were lucky to perform and work alongside you. Um, and I just had a question about the pitching process that you talked about at Meeting Place in 2017. So... Was that a pitching process? I was in that meeting place last year. Was that a pitching process in front of producers? Um, I think it was. Um, yeah, because I actually did the Finding Love interview, so so that's the one that I showed at, at that place. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. And is that where Wendy Martin was? Uh, no, Wendy Martin is the artistic director of Perth Festival. So, um, I'm not quite sure if she actually been to one of those places. Yeah, and I think because that pitching process is a really important idea for artists, and particularly artists with disability who don't often get to pitch their work in front of producers or directors. So, I think that's, you know, something that's really key that I'd be keen to hear more about that process and how that worked. Because, and obviously, you know, your work getting um, to Wendy Martin then opened a huge big door for you, and I've had, you know, barriers in place when I've done a similar thing for other festivals where I find it really difficult for the work that I've produced with people um, with Down syndrome to even get in front of festival producers' desks. I've for two years tried, um, and they haven't even looked at the showreel. So, mm -hmm. congratulations to you, and I think it's a, you know, congratulations also to Wendy Martin, who obviously saw your talent, and that's opened some doors for you. Yeah, yeah. It, well, thank you. I mean, I had a lot of doors opening from Dada to the Perth Festival. Yeah. And I also had opportunities to work with Chris as well, because he came down from Melbourne to watch the rehearsal of the play. And that's when he asked me to come over. So. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Put a question down the front here. Down the front. Oh yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So my apologies for the confusion. Uh, I'm deaf. I'm signing from the audience. The interpreter speaking from the stage. My question is about Home and Away. Um, I do remember having a deaf character on the show, uh, but the character themselves wasn't deaf. Yeah, I'd like to mention on that. Um, I know most Home and Away people, um, I know they had people playing people with disabilities, but they shouldn't, they have, they should have someone with an actual, have a disability in, in that, instead of having someone else to play it. It was just a funny situation because 
uh, about 12 or 15 years later, uh, that person miraculously became hearing again on the show. Yeah. <laughs> so, an interesting comment. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Julia, thank you for your keynote um, speech. Kath Duncan is a little bit shy to say this, but okay. we both uh, think that your keynote speech is one of the best keynotes we've ever seen. Thank and you. as Kath said, she's seen a lot. <laughs> um, so I'm Fiona Toomey, and I just wanted to mention um, that tomorrow afternoon we're actually doing a session called uh, Film Futures. And... Um, I, it's so heartening to already be talking about authentic casting and all these issues. So um, that panel is all about how can we actually create more um, uh, opportunities for the disability and connect disability arts with the film and television industry. And um, we'll definitely talk about authentic casting. Um, so I just wanted to mention that and thank you again for your presentation. Well, thank you so much for asking me to be here. Um, I would like to mention, when I was a very young little girl, I've never seen myself as an artist. But when my mother, Carol Hales, when she brought me to Dada, as my first time there, and so she opened that opportunity up, actually, and she told me, Julia, you have this amazing talent. And we knew that he got so much passion, so that's why I got. That's why Mum helped me to get into data. Just want to congratulate you and echo everything that um, has been said about you, Julia. You're really quite amazing. Um, from an artist's perspective, and um, the support networks and funding that's required to. Um, invest in someone such as yourself over the last 22 years. I'm interested to hear how the disability support side of things has been managed for you and how you see that emerging as we move into the NDIS. If you can give us any clues as to what's supported you so far and how you see that's going to work into the future, please. Um, okay, I'll just try to answer this question. Um, <laughs> well. I had a lot of support for Dada and they've been giving so much in my life for giving me all those projects. Um, for the future, um, with other people, with different artists, I know they, cause they will love being part of anything. Um, it's like open, opening up opportunities for everyone. So is that kind of... Question? <laughs> That's great, thank you. I'm just maybe, um, uh, are you working with the NDIS is yet with um, supporting your career at the moment? Um, yeah, well, I have been help. Well, I have been helping out with the NDIS because um, they were, they did ask me to do and. Um, they open opportunities to me to give a talk to their conference that I did. And I think that was last year or the year before, I think. Um, yeah, so um, in the future with the NDIS, yes, um, I really would like to help out with that program. <laughs> um, yeah, so they also gave me a bit of support, but I always do things by myself. I'm a very independent woman, and I've been living by myself for 17 years. So, <laughs> but I, if I do want help, I will ask for help with the NDIS, my family, um, even, even the Dada team, and Zoe and everyone who's been supported by me for the last 22 years. Hi, Julia. Hi. Uh, the fabulous um, keynote. Um, 
I was really interested with you, what you had to say about the SYNC leadership program, which is a disability led and it was just with deaf and disabled artists. And you talked about how successful it was. Did you, do you think it made a difference just being with people with disability in that leadership group? Um, yeah, um, as part of the SYNC leadership, it kind of helped to just to listen to what well, to you and to the other artists up there to, to listen about their careers. And can I just uh, rephrase it a little bit? Yeah, yeah, can you just explain it? Yeah, sorry, yeah, Julie. I realised yeah. as soon as it came out of my mouth that yeah. didn't make much sense. Um, so there are lots of leadership courses in yep. Australia, but that leadership course was for artists and it was for people with disability. Yeah. And lots of other leadership courses are for non-disabled people and maybe occasionally someone with disability. So my question, you following? Yes, <laughs> Julia? Yes, I'm, yes, I'm following. Yes, I'll get on with it, Gail. Yes. Um, so my question is, do you think it was better to do a leadership course with people with disability? Yes, it's mm. much better. Why? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, Putting you on the spot. Yeah, well, it makes it much better. Um, well, well, I'll give you an example of me, because I, cause I actually got out of that, pro, that program to be a better leader. And it's also good for the other people with all sorts of disabilities to get into that kind of program too. So they can help, so they can get into that as well for, for everyone, really. Thank you, Julia. And should we have more? Do you think the Australia Council should do more of those? Well, <laughs> well the Australia Council, um, they, cause I know they supported everything in the projects, but when people, like, if to say, if someone with disabilities come to you and they've got these amazing projects, just listen to them and you know, just say, okay, yes, this is amazing what you were doing. So we, can, we, so we can support you on that. So we have time for two more questions. Hi, Julia. I thought that was absolutely amazing. Here I am over here. And I'm on the other side of the coast for you. And I wondered if I also work with a lot of Down syndrome dancers and actors. Yeah. And recently we've been doing some things with some reality TV shows employable me and embarrassing enough as it is I've been asked to be involved in a dating show for, <laughs> I know for people with a disability which I actually do never watch reality TV and I don't like it mm. and I've been very concerned about the creative content and the creative and the control of what will happen do you have any opinions on what will happen in reality TV with people with disability um I don't know really I mean um, I know most people with disabilities it's hard to find, um, to go out on dates or, you know, try to find relationships. But in, in, but in my case, I had that problem too. So um, I did have a, okay, so the question about dating in that TV thing, I keep watching all these sorts of, re sorts of reality TV shows and I know most of them is not that great, but like the one you're talking about, it's probably good for people with disabilities. Um, we can make our own reality TV so people can understand. One more question. I guess I'm up for one more question. <laughs> Hi, Julia. I'm in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi. Um, my name's Johanna. I wanted to say thank you. Incredible uh, keynote. Thank you. I work with people with disabilities on storytelling projects. And as someone without a disability, I wondered um, what sort of characteristics you saw in the people you worked with, your mentors, your collaborators. What is it that made those relationships so successful? Um... Because when I was doing all those mentoring with all those people, they, 
Um, I think they know. I'll just show them. Um, can you just explain it a bit more? Sorry. Um, what advice do you have for people who don't have disabilities, who work with artists with disabilities? How can they do good work? Um, well, advice for them to work with people with disabilities would be a really great opportunity for them. And also, it will be good for them to, you know, just to sit down with them, to talk to them, um, and then they can, but they can still do their own work as well while they're talking to them. Yes, yeah, so I thank you. Thanks so much, Julia. Thank you. So I'll just talk one more thing with you about the workshop. So Julia has a workshop on Wednesday called the Big Dream Workshop. Yeah, yes, yeah, so I'm actually running a workshop called Goal Setting and, and it's called Dreaming Big. So I'll be running that in Wednesday, well, Wednesday morning. Yeah. So people can sign up for that and please, um, what we'll try and do is play the video extract from Julia's play later on in the program today. And please join me in giving a big hand to Julia. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.